All right, guys, we are back. Uh, this is actually Monday night in the shop, but I'm gonna go ahead and film this because uh, I've just been having some thoughts about uh, turbos and stuff like that, as always. Uh, I'm always messing with this stuff. And you guys seem to really like my turbo videos and my opinions on that stuff. But we've got some turbos on the ground right here and kind of just to pick your brain and uh, just give some informative stuff uh, for you guys to ponder. I don't know if any of, guys, any of you guys like messing with turbos. When it comes to turbos that go on my trucks, they are from uh, Brad at Savage Fabrication. Uh, he builds a great product, him and uh, Duncan Finley at Finley Precision Inductions. They always, they've, they've collabed on some awesome stuff. And uh, Duncan is actually gonna be building the turbo for, that goes on the 05. So whenever I go to buy turbos, that's I buy from them. That's who I like to buy from. But I do also do turbo testing and you already know the 89 is gonna be a turbo testing machine and it's gonna be set up with gauges so I can actually tell uh, good comparisons on EGTs and stuff like that. And I'm just gonna show you guys what we've got on the ground here. I've got an HY35 and an, H and an HE341. Um, some of you guys know, uh, a lot of you, a lot of people say that you should just scrap these turbos and I beg to differ. I'm talking about the HE3 or HY35, obviously a lot of people consider these, uh, garbage and pretty well just junk, but I do see potential for modifications and that's what it's all about. So if you guys know anything about modified whole set turbochargers, the key is uh, in the exhaust housing. So you can see right here already, I mean, there's a huge difference between these, but essentially these were made around the same, cl close to the same time. But look at, look at the outlet. So, I mean, that's about my palm and I can for sure cover. Yeah, no, I mean, you guys can tell. But the key is, is the gate setup. This internal gate setup is junk. So basically, the 12CM off the HX35 has this as well. Uh, it's still a horrible gate design, but um, it's a 12CM on the HX35, so you can kind of get around it a little bit, but you got to be careful about overspeeding the shaft. And on the HY35, it's very doable because this is only a 9CM housing with a junk gate setup. And people... People have made giant horsepower on this turbine housing and this turbine housing they can't. So basically what I'm getting at here is this is the good one. This is the one that needs to be thrown in the junk or thrown in the trash. With this uh, angled gate right here, the flow is so much better. There's guys that have made, they've cleared a thousand horsepower with this turbine, this turbine housing. So obviously we would need to get the, oh, and by the way, this, I can almost pull that out. It, this shaft is snapped, but uh, you'd want to mill this out to accept a 67 or 76, 67 turbine wheel, obviously. But what I'm thinking, because Brad at Savage Fab, he builds a turbo that's an HX35 or HX Super 9 is what he calls it. So it's an HX35 with this housing mounted onto the HX35, and he does that via welding uh tabs on with thread so you can use the screw holes because an hx35 doesn't have the v-band it has those four screws that connect the bearing housing to the exhaust housing but with an hy35 you've got the v-band just like you do right here or yeah i'm gonna call it, yeah we're going with v-band that's what it is so essentially you could put take this 9cm with the angled gate he turbine housing and put it on the hy35 and this would bolt right up to your uh, first gen, second gen, whatever. Not that this won't. I mean, this will still bolt up. You've got to just do some intercooler piping stuff. But essentially, you can put your intercooler piping. It'll bolt right up. You might, oil drains might be the, I think the oil drains would probably be about the same. And yeah, you just have to have a gate set up, uh, a downpipe, obviously, because look at the this thing's just massive this flows so much more air i would be more than happy to put a four inch down pipe with with this kind of v-band style connection versus these little dinky things which i might have 
some turbine housings that have that right over you know what we're doing this for your guys's learning and we might as well get it because we're trying to learn here so oh yes this is what we need right here yep well nope it doesn't have the piece on the back gosh dang it where oh where what, what do we got over here let's just take i think this is like an 18 cm what is this old girl oh it's a 21 not even an 18 21 cm h1c turbine housing versus look look at this look that's why you don't make big horsepower on this thing because this thing oh there's it's just all in the turbine housing design this this 21 i'm sure flows i mean you mill this thing out and it's going to flow a lot but you get a 9 cm super fast spool up and the same flow as like an 18 cm with no gate like that's just the perfect recipe to make power and all you everybody that's not a whole set believer you guys should really take notice of what whole set develops and comes out with and then other turbo companies copy the next year some people don't pay attention to that and it's honestly very aggravating because they think the whole set has never done anything and they just make oem chargers but they've kind of really led the way for a lot of turbochargers and stuff like that so you guys know who i'm talking to just take notice and do research because it's really just ignorant but these hy35s you could have the bolt up i mean it's going to be a single scroll or it's not a, a twin scroll or whatever but this will bolt right up to your manifold and then all then you've got your hy35 intercooler connection so you'll have your elbow coming off of here just like normal and come off of here and go to your intercooler or whatever and if it's not intercooled you'll have to get the crossover pipe that will accept this because the factory one will not accept the same size v-band connection but on to the cold side so we've discussed the hot side this thing makes the power it has crazy fast spool this is what you need i would mill this to a to accept a 76 67 turbine wheel and i plan on building one that the exact turbo i'm talking about just so i can do some turbo testing on the 89 again the aftermarket support for the hy35s is literally none they're just like hardly anything some of the compressor wheels will enter interchange but the goal what we'd be doing on the cold side is now this is out of the equation we've got what we the only thing we need off of this charger is the turbine housing and that is that's the gold mine right there that's what we need so on this bad boy um we would need to figure out we would need to plug this it's the old gate so i i pop this thing off it sits like that you guys i'm sure you guys know it sits like that but um this is not what i would want i would be buying a spring gate from savage or brad over at savage fab i talk about him a lot but he has good products for great prices and i mean he's just a good guy and his spring gate setup is more adjustable and everything. So I, I really like that design. And you can clock the turbo. Uh, full 360 degree clock is you can clock it wherever and that spring gate will work. In other companies, it doesn't. You you can only clock it a certain way and the spring gate will work. So just a heads up, if you guys are needing a spring gate, go get Brad's spring gate because it's a way better setup. But anyway, we would need to punch this bad boy out. I mean, I'm, I'm going to take the compressor housing off so I can get a measurement for this because we could we could run a stock compressor wheel and run the bigger turbine wheel that I've been talking about and have a just a towing machine and it would be extremely torquey. But I think I would rather go to a, a 60 millimeter, so a 60 by, by 86 compressor wheel. Uh, I believe I've got my notes over here. I, I kind of keep track of some random stuff and I don't you, some of you guys might not even want to watch any of this or listen to it but there's honestly I've got some good information whenever it comes to whole set stuff uh, and I've got sources to get the good information from so if I don't know something I can for sure find somebody to ask 
Uh, so HY35, let's see, is this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? So we got a seven blade. Uh, seven blade is a 56 millimeter. Most seven blade seven blades are 56 by 76 and a half. And if oh, I'm I'm reading the wrong deal. Okay, so HY35 seven blade 54 millimeter. So 54, 58, nine, uh, and they were some. Let's see, compressor was 54 by 76 and a half. Turbine was 58 by 65 and a half. 12 blade. Uh, yeah. They had the 12 blade with the newer curved blade design. Flow better, but doesn't spool as fast with an undivided 9CM. So, yeah. So we're looking at a 54 millimeter compressor. Um, this, well, yeah, this, this one over here I think is a 56, but... So a 54, even, so jumping from a 54 millimeter compressor wheel, if that is correct, I will get the calipers out after I get this off and find out, but 54 mil, seven blade, jumping up to a 60 by 86, and I, I don't know how many blade count that is, I would need to look, and then on, we would be going from a 12 blade turbine wheel to a 10 blade, so flow, less blades, more flow, um, but the more blades, like on Garrett turbos, more blades, I believe, the faster it spools, but less flow. So you, you got to sacrifice something somewhere. I could be wrong with that. Do not quote that. Uh, I believe, I, I read that uh, like a year ago. That could be wrong. But I read that somewhere. But, yeah. So that's what we'd be doing. We'd be jumping from a 54 to a 60 up here. And then the exhaust side is a 58, and we'd be jumping to a 67 with a 9CM. So basically we would have super fast uh spool with this 9cm but the flow you get the spool of a 9cm flow of an 18 non-gated like on the h1c's or whatever and that's what i had on my old my old truck was the 67 67 18 all that was was a a punched out uh h1c housing and this, if you can get a 9CM off an HE onto one of those old chargers, you're, I mean, it, it's going to go through the roof because that's just a better design as a whole. So I've been talking to some guys and they say that I should try it, but the only reason that most people don't do this is because HY35s are kind of few and far between, so you can't just produce them as a business. Um, that's why Brad make, uses an HX35 and welds on the flanges, and it looks beautiful, by the way. But yeah, that's kind of what I've been thinking I'm going to try out. I'm going to order a rebuild kit and a bunch of stuff, and I'm, I plan on building an HY35 for a guy out of Missouri, and I'm thinking about doing this same setup with his because I want, it to, I want this thing to just rip. And yeah, I think it'd be a very quality turbo. Um, getting rid, this is the bad part. This, you, you throw, people say that these turbos are junk, and but if you know what you're doing and you do some research, you, they really are not a bad turbo. You just need to ditch this turbine housing, and that's not a big deal to do. Take this thing off and put a better 9CM on with an angled internal gate, and boom, you've got a turbo that's going to make more power than that BE can put out, is my theory on that. Um, you want to get that thing like you want to with the VE, you want to utilize all of that uh, fuel you get in the low RPMs because those things fuel really well down low and you need to take advantage of it. So that's my two cents on the HY35 and what kind of conversions you could do to make power with them. So if you have an HY35 and you want to think about doing this, let me know. Uh, I could, and not just for me to do it or build one, that's not what I'm getting across, just for information and kind of why I was thinking this and what you could do to possibly do this. Um, and I will be posting update videos about this because this could be pretty cool. And yeah, I mean, turbo stuff's fun. And if, if you kind of get into turbos like I do and want to know the science of them and why they work and what could what combinations can work. So this is, would kind of be a, a Frankenstein turbo, but it would definitely work and I think it would prevail and I think it might work pretty good. So like, like I said, I've, I've got an, I've got two HY 35s. This one I might use for myself and the other one might be for the guy in Missouri. 
Um, but I, I'm, I'm curious to see what happens and what we could do with this. Uh, if, if he decides he wants to do it, then we are going to, but here within maybe the next couple of weeks, I might order some parts to build the turbo and kind of see what we could do with it. But for you, for you, uh, Cummins guys, first gen guys, that's just some theories on that. Uh, a bit, I would love to take advantage of this big, uh, turbine housing outlet where the downpipe connects because let me prop this up. Uh, I would, what I would do is just have my normal four inch exhaust and get a V band and have it welded onto my exhaust, uh, instead of the dinky little, or whatever that the the normal uh, this is a three inch V band I believe maybe two and a half I I don't know tiny and taking a bigger V band and have it welded on to mount directly to this which I would be willing to do that so this would not be a complete straight bolt on replacement you don't have to do any modifications this probably would require some downpipe work but. Just by looking at this outlet, would you guys, I mean, you would have to agree that that's much better flow. And I mean, I don't know, I, I would be willing to take it to the local, the guy in town and have him cut off, cut off the old V-band and put the new one on and, and pay, pay him to do it just for the increased flow. And probably it's going to lower, it's going to kill EGTs. It's, there won't be hardly any EGTs with this thing, especially on a VE truck. And that's going to be stock injectors or i mean it should work very well so that's that's gonna be it for tonight i just want to pick your brain a little bit of turbo talk so hy and he stuff just to kind of get you guys thinking about what uh what you could do with yours with your stuff and if you see something on marketplace you think you could pick up for cheap and kind of want to play around with it i don't know that's one of the biggest things about these trucks if you want to figure stuff out with them you got to play with them and kind of see what see what makes them work so that's going to do it for tonight uh just uh, this is a little bit longer video but i kind of wanted to just talk to you guys with, about that so unfortunately we aren't really doing anything in this video but um some good information and some good thoughts so you guys do your research and don't just knock stuff before you try it because there is all always a, usually a solution to make them better so that's all i've got for tonight and until next time, we will be right here on the Old School Crew with another video. So we'll probably see you guys tomorrow. Bye.